In the demanding world of surface mining, where productivity is measured in thousands of tons per hour, only the toughest machines survive. Among the pieces of iron that once ruled the pits and quarries of North America, few carry the legacy of the good old darts. These front-end loaders, with their distinctive offset cabs and nitrogen-assisted hydraulics, represented a bold engineering approach that pushed the boundaries of what mechanical drive loaders could accomplish. The story of dart wheel loaders is inseparable from the company that created them, a manufacturer whose roots stretch back to the dawn of the American automotive age. It is a tale of innovation, corporate acquisitions, and ultimately a machine that became obsolete before its time. The Dart Manufacturing Company was organized in 1903 in Anderson, Indiana. The very first Dart was a half-ton high wheeler with an underfloor engine and double chain drive. In 1907, the company relocated to a new factory in Waterloo, Iowa, where it would remain for nearly two decades. Early truck designs featured four-cylinder gasoline engines with chain drive, though by 1912 the company had adopted shaft drive, replacing the previous chain-driven models. The company restructured and was renamed several times before moving to Kansas City, Missouri in 1925 as the Dart Truck Company. Here the company would find its true calling. During the Great Depression, massive civil engineering projects like dams and highways created unprecedented demand for heavy-duty equipment. Dart responded by introducing an off-highway truck in 1937, marking the company's entry into the specialized world of mining and construction haulage. In 1950, a veteran truck designer named Ralph Kress became general manager of Dart Truck Company. Kress would later earn the title Father of the Off-Highway Truck, and his influence on Dart's trajectory cannot be overstated. Under Kress's leadership, Dart pioneered technologies that would define the off-highway industry. The company became the first to use exclusive power steering on a truck, enabling the creation of much larger machines. In 1951, Dart launched the massive tandem drive Model 75 TA, a world record beater for its size. With a rated capacity of 75 tons, it far exceeded any previous off-highway hauler. During Cress's tenure through 1955, Dart increased its sales six times over. By his final two years with the company, no mining truck other than a Dart was sold west of the Mississippi River. Though Cress would eventually move on to design innovative haulers for Wabco and Caterpillar, his engineering philosophy remained embedded in Dart's DNA. In 1958, Pacific Car and Foundry acquired the Dart Truck Company of Kansas City. This acquisition brought Dart into the same corporate family as Kenworth, creating the KW Dart brand. Pacific Car and Foundry saw Dart as its entry point into the lucrative mining vehicle market. Through the 1960s, the KW Dart division expanded its product offerings. Five KW Dart trucks were among the initial haul trucks used when Kennecott's famous Bingham Mine in Utah transitioned from rail to truck haulage in 1963. These trucks, numbered 201 through 206, could haul 65 tons of waste material and represented the cutting edge of mechanical drive technology. By 1970, the KW prefix was dropped when KW Dart Truck Company Division of Packard became simply the Dart Truck Company Division of Packard. Products during this period included heavy dump trucks with payloads up to 150 tons powered by Caterpillar, Detroit Diesel and Cummins engines. While Dart built its reputation primarily on haul trucks, the company also developed a line of wheel loaders designed to complement its truck fleet. The flagship of this line was the Dart 600 series, a massive front-end loader engineered specifically for the demanding environment of surface mining operations. The Dart 600C, the most refined version of the series, weighed approximately 82 tons and featured a bucket capacity of 9.9 .9 cubic meters, with a transport length of 12.7 meters and a transport width of 5 meters. It was a substantial machine designed to load the company's own line of haul trucks efficiently. What set the Dart 600 apart from its competitors was its distinctive design philosophy. The machine featured an offset cab configuration, a design choice that generated both praise and criticism. 
Operators who ran these machines reported that the offset cab provided excellent visibility when loading trucks, allowing the driver to see clearly around the bucket. The cab was also reportedly quieter than conventional center-mounted designs. The Dart 600 series incorporated several innovative features that reflected the engineering ambitions of its designers. The most notable was the nitrogen assist system, which supplemented the hydraulic system to provide additional lifting power and smoother operation. When functioning properly, this system delivered impressive performance. However, it also proved to be one of the machine's most challenging aspects. Operators reported that if the nitrogen was lost from the system for any reason, it took nine standard nitrogen bottles to refill it completely. The system required regular maintenance and resealing, and its complexity added to the overall maintenance burden. The machine could be equipped with various power plants. Engine options included GM, Cummins, and Caterpillar diesels, with horsepower ratings in the 700 to 860 range, depending on configuration. Operators reported that the GM Detroit diesel engines, particularly the 149 series, were among the most reliable options. Perhaps the most ambitious variant was the electric drive version. Dart developed a loader with two drive motors, one mounted to the front axle input and one on the rear, in an attempt to compete with Letourneau's electric drive loaders. This represented forward-thinking engineering at a time when electric drive was beginning to transform the large mining equipment market. The Dart 600 entered a market dominated by established players. Caterpillar's 900 series loaders were gaining momentum, offering operators proven reliability and an extensive dealer network. Le Tourneau was pushing the boundaries of electric drive technology, pioneering systems that would eventually become the industry standard for the largest wheel loaders. Despite being powerful machines, the Dart loaders faced challenges in market acceptance. One operator who managed multiple Dart 600C loaders described them as a constant pain due to the nitrogen assist system's maintenance requirements. The offset cab configuration, while offering visibility advantages, meant the machine did not fit well in maintenance shops because the cab protruded so far to one side. Some operations amassed significant fleets of dart loaders. At least one company ran 28 dart machines before eventually replacing them with Caterpillar 992C loaders, indicating that while the darts were capable machines, the industry was moving toward more conventional designs with better parts and service support. By the early 1980s, the mining equipment market was experiencing significant turbulence. Slowing sales of mining equipment pushed Packer to divest its dart division. In April 1984, Unit Rig and Equipment Company of Tulsa, Oklahoma purchased the dart product line of wheel loaders and mechanical drive haulage trucks. The acquisition included the Model 600C mechanical drive front-end loader with its 48,000-pound bucket capacity end dump trucks ranging from 85 to 120 tons, and tractor-trailer bottom dump coal haulers with capacities from 120 to 160 tons. Unit Rig saw the Dart line as a complement to its Lectra Hall electric drive trucks. Unit Rig had built its reputation on diesel electric mining trucks and was looking to expand its product range. The Dart mechanical drive trucks filled gaps in Unit Rig's lineup particularly in the mid-size segments where electric drive was not yet cost-effective. The dart wheel loaders occupy a unique place in mining equipment history. They represented an ambitious attempt to challenge established manufacturers with innovative engineering solutions. The offset cab, nitrogen assist system and electric drive experiments all demonstrated a willingness to think differently about loader design. Today, Finding a functional Dart 600 is extremely difficult. Parts availability, other than transmission and engine components, is virtually non-existent. The machines have largely disappeared from active service, replaced by loaders from manufacturers who maintained stronger dealer networks and parts support. Yet among equipment enthusiasts and miners who operated these machines, the Dart loaders are remembered fondly. They were, in the words of one operator, the biggest and baddest during the time they were introduced. Their distinctive appearance and unique engineering made them memorable in an industry where most machines blend together. 
The dart wheel loader story reflects broader themes in industrial history. Innovation alone cannot guarantee success. Market timing, corporate stability, and support infrastructure all play crucial roles in determining which machines thrive and which become footnotes in history. From its humble beginnings as a half-ton high-wheeler manufacturer in Indiana to its final days as a division of Terex, Dart left an indelible mark on the mining and construction equipment industry. The company pioneered off-highway hauling, produced world record-setting trucks, and attempted to challenge giants like Caterpillar and Letourneau with unconventional wheel loader designs. The Dart 600 may no longer roam the pits and quarries of the world, but its legacy endures in the memories of those who operated these distinctive machines, and in the engineering lessons, it taught an industry still striving to build bigger, better, and more efficient equipment.